It's that time again. I have no idea what you were thinking because I was referring to that time for another Reaper Metal release. It's been a while. You might not have noticed that, and shame on you if you haven't, but it has been. It actually been offset a month because normally Reaper Metal Productions has a monthly release, but last month we did not. So for the month of September, well, we've got a lot of cool things going on, but first we got... Destructor Sonic Bullet reissue. The second in the series, I uh, guess, of series is of re- reissue and Destructor stuff. First it was Maximum Destruction. Now it's the second output, Sonic Bullet. So I'm really stoked about this because this is where my Phantom of Destructor really starts. This is the album I got to know first before the classic album of Maximum Destruction from 1985 that most people, I would say, or at least older people probably that were around for that one or, or old, you know, old enough to be around to appreciate that one. So this is a, you know, a fan moment for me coming true. I never thought I would ever be working with Destructor, period, or literally putting out an album that I was buying at a store and loving and then having to really kind of oversee it for the new cover that it's got. If you remember the the uh, original version, you'll notice that it has a different cover. And so we kind I as being the guy involved in doing the layout of this, uh kind of kept that left in spirits though. And so as you could see in this collage here, if you were to remove the people from it, this and then the, the names and all that, that would have been the original cover. So uh, honoring the band's request to want different artwork and kind of switch things up for the reissue, I thought it would be really cool and then a cool panel to throw those photos in there and stuff. Because when it came to the CD just that had all the uh, other materials, like having this collage and stuff... It was like, well, why would we want to get rid of those? But then we had like cool uh, live photos presented to us, and it's like, well, man, like now that you throw lyrics and all that, all that on there, it's like it's be- it's going to be hard to almost fit this on here without making it overly expensive to have all these pages and stuff that maybe aren't that great to throw in that expense for just simply live photos. So it was a cool way to. It, it was kind of honestly an accident that really worked itself out, and uh, and it's nice. Then I think it works when you, especially like when you open the CD or. You slide out of the LP like that, and it's like the first thing you see. And so, if you knew that that was the original cover, you know, what I mean, it just kind of adds like that, uh, just something to it. You know, it's really cool because like this, that was on the original, and it's like you know, trying to revision this as far as your packaging, um, and then not really having all the source materials available to reduplicate the previous release or re- issue of it, the original. Um, and then have like kind of scan that stuff in like they can get they can get like really pixelated or, or the quality of materials be it pictures and stuff they can get lost um especially if you're blowing it up for an LP so it was really cool to kind of a being able to keep those intact and they turn out the way that they did um but b just awesome to then have to come up with a different way to revision this but then still kind of keep it close to the original um so i kind of kept it closer to the close to the original as far as packaging but then also uh honoring like the judas priest iron maiden insert classic band here where they reissue their stuff and like when you put them all together it'll spell out judas priest or spell out iron maiden they like the spines kind of match it doesn't spell out destructor when you put two things together maximum destruction sonic bullet but it does kind of have a similar back to it. And so the spines are similar. Um, and then ultimately when it came to the new cover art like this, for Maximum Destruction, it has like the, the, the Destructor Skull guy that's on the back of that LP. So it's kind of revisioning him and that's why his face on a bullet where you kind of can see on the original there it had nothing to do and totally kind of abandoned it. And really this came out in 2003. So the original cover has very much a Photoshop 2003 look to it so it's kind of cool to rebrand it and like give it that destructor character their mascot as it follows suit with their latest release kind of right here with there he is and there he's got even the the, the planet earth that was their uh maximum destruction that kind of spawned the character i guess i don't know but uh, you know seeing that and having an uh, you know an opinion to kind of present there like that's where it's like oh you know it'd be cool like if it actually had a bullet and then you put them on there it works in the style of the band and then bringing those candles that are on the maximum destruction cover throwing them in there again like and bringing that destructor world i think it's 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy in that sense. And then Dave Overkill had this logo right here for Sonic Bullet done for some time that it was cool. Then I was like, oh, well, now we got even a logo, subtitle logo, because Maximum Destruction had that. So it really dialed in what they started at, maybe intentionally or, you know, amateur just things that happen that I think a lot of people love about first albums that, you know, it didn't really exactly keep going maybe because of the history of the band and this being essentially like 18 years later of a release. I don't know, but it seemed to have been lost uh, on the original. So it's kind of cool to be bringing that back. And there you go uh, inside the CD. And then ultimately the track listing is different. So I tried to explain this on a Hellcast episode to J-Dog um, and maybe he followed, maybe he didn't, but it's it was hard to explain even thinking about it. So simply put, is that this uh, this EP being 18 years later from the first EP, but essentially goes in sequential order, Maximum Destruction, then Sonic Bullet. It had Sonic Bullet, Heavy Artillery, Silent Enemy, Blackest Night, Master of the Universe, and then it had G-Force and the Triangle, which were then two different uh, recordings than the ones that I just listed off. And then you throw two live tracks, which are still on here, Pawn and Evil and Iron Curtain into the mold. Boom, you got a full-length CD, 40-some minutes. So when it came to the reissue, though, because G-Force and the Triangle then being on that album that never got finished and properly released, it was then released at this point in 2015, I don't know the year, as back in bondage, though. The true second album finally getting released, but not in the order that it would have been. And so when you put second album that was actually released, Sonic Bullet, and then back in bondage later down the line, actually released but then containing two of the songs that sonic bullet had because they were unreleased songs at the time sonic bullet originally came out in 2003 it was kind of like well why would we rehash that so basically the simple way of putting it storm of steel is an ep with a studio track of storm of steel that you wouldn't get otherwise and a demo track of we are ready that you wouldn't get otherwise that would be on that ep and then rather than putting out that ep i guess as a seven inch because there's only, only two tracks really really worthy of having then to reciprocate or the same kind of material with then the album stuff. If it's not going to be a promotional EP, it kind of loses its purpose. So take the value that it does have the, those tracks and then fix a problem with Sonic Bull missing those now double tracks that would have been on Back in Bondage, the Triangle, and G Force. And boom, Storm of Steel, we are ready. That's on this. And so this has a different track listing, different layout, a lot of different. And very much approached, I like to think, because I was the guy at the helm putting this in uh, the band's ear and working with them with it, that we should do it this way. I think that would be more valuable. It would honor the the catalog. It would honor the fans trying to collect the catalog and get all the you know original music from it. Like, I don't know. I think that when you throw, like especially a reissue when it has bonus tracks and it's just like live and especially if those live tracks don't sound amazing which the live tracks in here sound really good um and not to say the storm steel ones don't it's just like oh you don't you don't really have the bonus stuff so i thought to kind of take the studio stuff or the original recordings anyway and throw them on here was a cooler way to solve a a problem but b you know not be a lame reissue that's got a new cover and so on and so forth that's the destructor sonic bullet reissue both cd and lp and then of course if you want digital so you can grab it digitally and it even kind of explains all that jargon that i just said if you tuned out earlier on this video but if you did you wouldn't be listening to me spew right now so anyway if you're interested in this you love destruct you want to support reaper metal productions well this is the best way to do it is buy a grab a copy cdlp reaper metal productions Bandcamp, camp reaper metal link is in the description there should be no reason that you can't be able to find this and hey maybe you need to hear it for the first time well you can do that boom here on Bandcamp. there you go i just wanted to walk you through it and here's the last thing i didn't show you the lp just black vinyl hate all these options especially for that whole double buy thing where you know there'll be black there'll be pictures there'll be color like i'm not saying it's bad for somebody to do that but when i have a slightly a gripe over it and i'm going to run my own label well then i'm going to do what i want to do and that is one color that's it black vinyl traditional no extra bells and whistles it's special in that regard that it's just 
buy a record and listen to the music. You got all the other specialties. I explain it to in great lengths. So you can just hopefully just appreciate having the music when it's all said and done in this packaging, done the way we want, with an insert, boom, there's the LP, but then boom, there's the CD. And one small fact that's fun, that when you're putting records on LPs, one of the big things you got to do is the timing of sides. Usually you'd like to think, all right, if there's 12 songs, then there's going to be six songs on each side. Just put it six and six. Doesn't always work that way. And sometimes you'd have to do seven and uh, five. Sometimes you can't just split it like that, where it's like you still got to put six and six on a side, but then maybe you can the, the five-minute song that ends the first side needs to be flipped out with a three-minute song to then balance out those sides because they're too long. And so that's exactly what we had to do here. So the track listings flip-flop the track or something, and I won't tell you which because that'll be a part of the fun in experiencing the CD to the LP or simply looking at the back of them and finding out because the digital and the CD represent basically the ideal uh, track listing where the LP uh, represents the we had to do it because it wouldn't fit track listing. So fun fact for you. Hope you appreciated this. This is a little bit different video, but if you're here just for Hellcast or Heavy Metal Relics videos, there's going to be plenty of that coming up, so you're not going to be exactly throwing away your notification or your subscribe away by just seeing this video. It's just to inform you. So definitely follow the links, and we'll talk to you next time.